Hello, my friends. It is. This is episode 10 on um, Genesis 6. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, here it's uh, April 15th, 2022. Did my taxes finally today. And let's go. I won't waste your time. At the end, I'll, I'll make some comments and I'm going to go over, uh, touch a little bit on Revelations. Um, kind of a, a glossing over. Genesis 6, the wickedness and judgment of man. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass, <clears throat> when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Uh, that's the angels. Uh, we're looking at the women. That they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, for all whom they chose. I'm sorry. Uh, the angels saw some beautiful women and took and made them their wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. So apparently the angels mating with the um, human women their children were mighty men and giants and men of renown. Okay, uh, Genesis 6, verse 5. The Lord, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So God is getting ready to uh, wipe the earth because of the evil that men were doing. Um, Except he likes, uh, he's giving grace to Noah. Noah pleases God. Verse um, 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. or Japheth. Um, verse 11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. The ark prepared, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. A cubit is from your elbow to the tip of your finger. It's about 18 inches. So, um, that's 450 feet. 
uh, 300 cubits. And its width, 50 cubits. Uh, 75 feet. And its height, 30 cubits. 45 feet. You shall make a window for the ark. And you shall finish it in a cubit. Finish it to a cubit from above. And set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant, covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark, you and your sons. I'm sorry. You, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And everything, every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be good for you and for them. So Noah, his wife, his three sons, and three wives. Uh, sounds like eight people on the, on, the, on the ark. Um, and it shall be food for you and for them. Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Okay, let's go over um, a little some notes here. Um, Genesis 6, 1 through 4. This is a difficult passage, but the likely meaning of the sons of God, the daughters of men, is that fallen angels took on the human form of men and married women, human women, the daughters of Adam. This illicit marriage of spirit beings and human beings was an affront to the divine order of reproducing according to one's kind, as it said in Genesis 1.24. So I think this um, union of angels with humans created uh, evil or more evil um, offspring. And began to cause a lot of problems for people on earth and it kind of um, it up upset God and ruined his um, his plan for us was not to uh, mix with the angels I'm, I'm, I'm get, I suppose because they're them and all their offspring are drowned uh, Genesis 6.3. This is the second outright mention of the Spirit in Genesis. The first is in connection with creation in Genesis 1.2. While this one, my spirit shall not strive forever, speaks of destruction. Like the people of Noah's day, those who did not respond to God's Spirit have no guarantee that they will continue to be productive Um, continue to be continue to prod convict and remind them of the importance of fellowship with him
that humanity's days shall be 120 years. It can mean either that the flood would come after 120 years, or less likely that the average human lifespan would be 120 years. Humanity's days. Oh, okay. So it seems like when he says here, um, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, and he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So, from that point on, <clears throat> God saw that his creation was going bad. He gave um, Noah notice, and Noah had 120 years to build the ark, because at, a, at 120 years, he was going to kill everything on earth, drowned everything on earth. Uh, Genesis 5. In the Bible's most definitive statement about um, human depravity, such um, emphatic words were used that there is no room for misinterpretation. Every intent of every person's heart was only evil continually. So everybody was doing evil. There's no word in the Hebrew Bible for the mind. So heart represents a person's thinking as well as his or her emotions and will. <clears throat> Although the people of Noah's day were exceedingly wicked, in essence, evil all the time in every thought and deed. <clears throat> no part of any individual's life to this day has escaped the consequent corruption of original sin. Uh, see also Psalms 14, 1 through 3, and Romans 6, 5. Only the blood of Christ removes sin's stain. So we all have this tendency, and the only way to um, apologize for it is to uh, accept Jesus. That's the only way to wash yourself clean. 6.6 six, That God was grieved in his heart by man's wickedness shows that he has emotions. Um, so um, this is another reminder that we are built in the image of God and that the way we see things, feel things, um, and do things is uh, in a way, the way God would see, feel, and do things. Of course, He's just infinitely more powerful and um, and uh, and intelligent. But we have um, we are created in His image. Uh, God, He sorrows over the sin of His children, in the way a human parent grieves over a rebellious or estranged son or daughter. Uh, he was grieved. Um, here's further evidence. 1 Samuel 15, 11, and 29. 2 Samuel 24, 16. Isaiah 63, verse 10. And Ephesians 4, verse 30. Shows that God was grieved over our wickedness. Um, or the people's wickedness from that time bef uh, during Noah's life. <clears throat> Uh, Genesis 6, 8, 9. Why was Noah chosen? For the same reason anyone is chosen. Because he found grace. The undeserved favor of God. It is God's grace that saves depraved humans from the flood of sin. Not a person's works. Uh, see Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. In the Old Testament, to be just means to be genuine and sincere. In the New Testament, it means to be right with God. In both cases, Noah qualified. He was just and he was right with God. Uh, Genesis 6 verse 9. Virtually nothing is known about the first 500 years of Noah's life, except that he was a just man. 
the only blameless perfect person then live then living in his generations on earth and like Enoch he walked with God whoa see Genesis 5 21 and 22 Oh, it's, uh, Genesis 5.21. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. After he begat Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. Whew. It'll be nice to meet him one day. We will in the millennial reign. And then hopefully after that in heaven. Uh, which I think it, it might just be us living on, still on earth. But... I, uh, Bible's unclear. Noah labored unremarkably for the first two-thirds of his life and was approaching retirement age when the call of God came. Throughout history, God has often raised up a champion for the cause of righteousness in a time of widespread, widespread immorality. Uh, 6 verses 14 through 16. The ark. God commanded Noah to build his the ark God commanded Noah to build was huge. Three stories high, 45 feet, 450 feet long. However, most contemporary depictions of the ark are too boat-like. The ark was not a ship designed to travel from one port to another, but a floating box intending, intended to keep things from drowning. This massive construction project took Noah and his three sons about a hundred years to complete. Uh, see uh, Genesis 5.32 Genesis 7.6 and 11 When God approached Noah to build an ark because floodwaters would come on the earth <coughs> the earth <coughs> had received only moisture from the ground never any rain. See Genesis 2.5-6 so Noah's obedience was truly by faith. See Hebrews 11, verse 7. He could not anticipate what was coming based on past experience. Still he believed God. And that was enough reason for him to build. So, um, no one else expected the flood. And here he is building this uh, giant box uh, for a hundred years working on it. <clears throat> this is the first mention of a covenant. In it, God promises to redeem a people for himself. See Genesis 9 verses 9 through 17. God gave Noah exact proportions and Noah did all that God commanded him. People want to pick and choose what to believe, but Noah believed and obeyed everything God said. And that obedience saved him and his family, as well as all the generations after him. Present obedience to the whole truth of God's word can impact future generations as well. <clears throat> the sons of God. Uh, the, the three primary theories about the sons of God in Job 1 through 6, 1 verse 6, Job 2 verse 1, and Job 38 <clears throat> verse 7, the term sons of God describes angels. In this theory, fallen angels <clears throat> saw the daughters of men were filled with lust, <clears throat> cohabitated with them, producing giants. Uh, Genesis 6 verse 4 who were half angelic and half human. In se a second possibility is that the sons of God were the descendants of Seth, who married Cain's female descend descendants. A third view is that the sons of God were powerful kings who collected wives, leading to the beginning of royal polygamy. In any case, the relationships seem to have involved sexual perversion with men taking women they wanted. Uh, I'm going to go with since the children were giants and exceedingly wicked 
I'm going to say uh, it's my belief that the sons of God were angels because um, no other <clears throat> place is mentioned um Um, people producing giants. That's the end of uh, Genesis 6. I'm going to go over a little bit of um, Revelations in a nutshell. Like Jesus' disciples, we wonder, what is in store for this world? What will happen? The Bible lays out an enthralling picture. The second coming is mentioned 318 times in the New Testament. And in, in the New Testament's 260 chapters. This is not something we should ignore. God desires us to know about Christ's return. Well, what's going to happen is um, I'm certain we're close to the rapture. That's when uh, all Christians will be taken up out of the earth. Once that happens, um, the seven years of tribulation will start. And uh, that's when the cups, the bowls, and um, and the seals will all be opened and let loose on the earth. God's going to pour out His um, wrath on the earth after after the church has been removed. So the people that have refused God will be down here enduring all of those um, tribulations. Um, then after the, uh, and there will be a great revival uh I believe it's Noah and um, Elijah are coming back. Uh, they're going to go to Jerusalem. They will be uh, attacked, but they will be invincible. They will, if people try to hurt them, they shoot flames out of their mouth and burn them up. Meanwhile, they are proselytizing to the Jews in um, Israel. And I think that's where um, they convert um, twelve thousand from each of the twelve tribes of Judah. Uh, each of the twelve tribes of Israel, they'll get twelve thousand from each, which becomes the hundred forty-four thousand uh, Jews that convert to Christianity. They are uh, becoming. They become very important in the um, millennium. So, uh, in the tribulation, there'll be unrestrained evil. That's after we're gone, after the rapture, which I think is pretty soon, because according to prophetic evidence, I'm going to go be going over evidence. I've got lots of it that the Bible is true, that all this is true. There's prophetic evidence. There's documentary evidence. There's lots of evidence. I'll be going over that uh, later in, in subsequent um, episodes. Um, I will start to uh, break it up into little pieces I could put in at the end of these chapters. Okay, so um, the moment after the rapture, the Spirit of God will remove any restraining influence on earth so that things will be far, far worse than even today. So right now, uh, evil is kind of held back a little bit. Uh, at that point, all the Christians are gone. And um, the Holy Spirit will stop restraining people. And uh, there will be things that we, ha we can't even imagine going wrong. I, uh, I assume you're, we're all Christians listening to this. Well, if you're not, I would uh, advise you accept Jesus into your heart right now 
and ask for his to forgive you for your sins and take you to heaven. Um, there's there'll be another thousand years, the millennium. Uh, in order to get into the millennial, the millennium, um, you can study more then, and then decide you want to be with God or with Satan. But for now, I would recommend you do that simple thing and ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, take you to heaven. But I assume we're all Christians. Okay. The seven-year tribulation period will see the climax of worsening conditions, the anger of God against the wicked, and the signs of Christ coming in judgment. Believers alive at the rapture will miss those seven horrible years. The second coming to judge the world. After the seven years is the second coming. The Antichrist will rule wickedly. But just when it seems there is no hope, when the bottom is finally reached and evil rules, the second coming will finally come about and God's Son will dethrone the beast. Um, the... Um, The desolation of the church, uh, of the uh, temple in Jerusalem is a big deal. I think that starts the uh, tribulation. Uh, the, the temple in Israel has not been built yet. They, they are not doing sacrifices in the uh, temple because there is no temple. But the plans have been written. They've ordered the furniture. They've ordered the chairs and um, robes and everything. They're going to build the temple, and then we know the rapture is near. Um, we are not supposed to know when. Uh, it's supposed to be a surprise. It says no man will know uh, the day of its coming. But um, when that temple is under construction or, or about done, be ready. <laughs> Finally, uh, this, this evil world will be gone. The second coming will finally come about, and God's Son will dethrone the beast. The millennium to rule the world. The world millennium simply means 1,000 years. During those 10 centuries of righteousness, Christ will rule on earth from his capital in Jerusalem. To add to the excitement, John tells us that the followers of Christ will rule with him. Yes. Um, there will be a hierarchy. I guess people that are preachers today, and uh, especially good people, will be in the um, the ruling class, uh, high priest and such, uh, leading the um, the worship, like John saw in Revelations. I believe it's Revelations one. Uh, the twelve, the twenty four elders, and the 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 seven beasts with uh, all the eyes <coughs> worshiping God. Uh, there will be a lot of worship going on, and um, it will be great and pleasant and fun. And uh, we will have great feasts, and uh, God likes us to be happy. We're His children, just like you like watching your children play and laugh and be happy. That's the way He looks at us. Okay. Although the physical properties... There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Although the physical properties of the new heaven and the new earth are not described in detail, what we are told is enough to fill us with hope and joy. John uh, says we should walk submissively. Now John was very close to Jesus. He was with him at all the important um, events in his life. And um, he knew Jesus very closely, very well. And uh, so you should trust exactly what John says. And God brought him to heaven, and Jesus talked to him, and God talked to him. John says, take great pains to emphasize. Sorry for the inter interruption. Uh, I need a new camera. This one keeps shutting off all the time. 
Oh. Um. The um. This camera is not supposed to do movies, so it shuts off like every four gigabytes. So you can't do movies on it. I'm gonna get an upgrade later. Anyway, so. Uh, God will judge the world and his holy saints are charged repeatedly his holy saints are charged repeatedly to distance themselves from the world's rebellion by keeping the words of the book. We are to walk submissively according to God's word. I'll have to finish this later because this is getting too long. But um, maybe you've heard uh, they're starting on the one world currency. Uh, Joe Biden proposed a... Um, digital currency. They've already tried it in India and it failed. Um, everybody was given, I think, a credit card. But the there are over a billion people in, in India and uh, in the rural areas. Uh, it was in... Uh, not practical because you know, they, they trade water for chickens and cows for land and a lot of horse trading and they don't have swipers and stuff anyway Joe Biden has has started um, has proposed I think he ordered it a direct uh, a direct order from the White House that uh, they start working on a digital currency that is for uh, control so they know everything you if they uh, do away with our cash and our credit cards and our bank accounts and just set up a government system where every transaction is monitored or let's say you you don't you disagree with the current administration and um, they want to uh, kill babies or, or abortion or what kill anybody over 60, whatever. Um, and you say, well, that's evil to kill babies. That's evil to kill old people just because they're no longer working. They might just shut off your account. Or, uh, I've heard in some cases, like in China, they, they limit... Oh, like they just did it in Canada. Uh, Justin Trudeau, the Canadian truckers were um, protesting against... Um, his mask mandates and washing your hands and everybody had to take a shot or you couldn't do business uh, drive a truck or something like that so he froze their bank accounts their credit accounts uh, with a limit they could do I think it was like a hundred dollars a week or something so they could buy food I guess um, but that's what this new digital currency is about control and um, I think that'll have a lot to do with the number of the beast that these uh, people that refu um, reject Jesus that they're going to have to um, accept they will have to accept the number of the beast in order to do business with this digital currency this could be a precursor or uh, maybe this is it okay uh, thanks very much for tuning in I really appreciate it and um God bless you. And episode 11 will be will be going back to Revelations. Uh, have a great week. Stay positive. Don't think about anything negative. Focus on the positive. There's plenty of negative stuff, but it only hurts you to think about it. Focus on good things. Uh, even the prisoners of Auschwitz, some of them were happy because they would focus on getting out escaping going to to rescue their wives or their children focus on something good and you can be happy anywhere end suffering today god bless you
Bye.